take these off my feet. Yep. I went into the situation that I'm going to have to kill the guy. I'm not going to just hurt him. I'm not going to stab him two times and say, yeah, we're even. You know, because the philosophy in prison is, you know, you stab me, I kill you. I just stabbed the shit out of him, you know, until he didn't move anymore. The reason I said Troy Kell was one of the most dangerous people I've ever met is because Troy Kell, when you meet him and when you see him in a, in a certain environment, is a very uh, charming, charismatic, intelligent individual who certainly by no means looks like somebody who could commit a crime as heinous as he committed in this case. I've seen guys hesitate on not thinking something was serious, and it was serious, and they get themselves stabbed up or they get themselves fucked off. They get themselves killed. All the white supremacists were going, say hi to Troy, make sure, to, you know, say hi, let Troy know that I said hi. And they were given the power, the white power symbol. Oh, sure. So. Well, and they like to yeah. mention that too because yeah. they want the status that's associated with him and his crime. Because they're looking to Troy, you know, he's, a, he's our inmate god, and we're going to do anything we can to gain status with him because then that protects us within the institution. So they hold his shanks, they hold his brew, any contraband that he has, and he very subtly manipulates everything. And then to the administration, he wants to represent this clean image. Well, I'm not doing anything. You know, I'm not associated with these guys, but he still has his soldiers going out and performing these acts. Well, that's a good cleanup for them. I mean, they have to say that to really justify doing that to me. I mean, keeping me in the hole, restricting my movements, uh, making sure that that there's no real freedom for me to have, and maybe I'm not entitled to that. I mean, it's perspective of the individual. You know, some individuals think that, you know, he shouldn't have anything. Give him some bread and water and put him in a cage somewhere. And that's, that's fine, too. But don't expect the, the guy to be a nice guy and smile and to say thank you for the bread and water every time you bring it. You know, it's a double standard. They, they expect you to suck ass regardless of, of what they're running their face about. You suck ass long enough, pretty soon you start choking on shit. My personality now has, is be reflectant from how I was raised in, in the penitentiary. It desensitizes you. You don't have the human interaction, the contact, understanding or anything. It's structured that everybody's a piece of shit. You shouldn't respect anybody. It's kind of like, you know, just, it, it doesn't matter. you have to realize why Troy Kell went to prison. And that being, uh, at, at 18 years old, he concocts a scheme with a couple of his friends to take a young man he's never met before in his life, a, a young man named Cotton Kelly, uh, take him out in the desert, take out a gun, Troy Kell takes out a gun and shoots him six times at close range in the face, killing him. After the killing, takes his wallet, and they go by a convenience store and buy liquor. This guy I felt was taking advantage of a friend of mine and she asked for my help and I went kind of overboard. Me and a friend of mine from high school agreed to beat this guy up because he was doing some things to some teenage girls that we knew. She was a friend of mine. She was like a, a sister kind of to me. I met Cotton Kelly at Circus Circus eight months prior to this actual tragedy. 
He ran some type of um, adult entertainment business. He wanted me to pose nude for him. He had started following me and calling my house constantly, harassing my family. And as a 15-year-old child, I made a very bad decision, a very immature request, and I called upon Troy to beat the man up, to leave, have him leave me alone. I was raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, in a middle-class family. I'm the only child. I think I was probably just an ordinary kid. Huh? On the blog, I wasn't any different or anything from anybody else that I noticed. <laughs> Troy's been a part of our life um, ever since I first came to Las Vegas, um, since I was probably like six years old. Um, we lived on one corner of the street, and on the opposite street, he lived at the other corner. And um, me and a couple of friends, two little girlfriends, were walking down the street, and him and his little friends were sitting in front of his house on their bicycles. And, you know, they were watching us, googly-eyed, because he's three years older than me. So when we got all the way to the end of the street, towards the desert, you know, we turned around and said something real sassy, and they chased us on their bikes, and we ran. And he jumped off his bike and tackled me in the grass, and, you know, it just became like a plaything. And ever since then, he was like, you're going to be my girlfriend. And I said, no, I don't even like boys. Well, Troy used to come over to our house when he was like seven years old, play with Sandy and Shane in the backyard, or go swimming. Um, he was one of the neighborhood kids. Good kid. My father's into horses and kind of a redneck background, country boy kind of thing, and we had horses and stuff. I was expected to be successful. You know, my family, you know, they're not losers. His father was really, really strict, and um, I remember one time on his birthday, we were, uh, he, I think he was turning 13, and I believe I was 10, and I rode my bike all the way to the mall, and I bought him a Nike outfit, and he had to sneak out in his backyard and climb up on the brick wall for me to give him his gift because um, he was on restriction. He was always on restriction, just and for absolutely nothing. His father must have been very tough on him, very abusive, I believe, with him. And his mother um, was never around. I know they were separated, but I don't think his mother came around too much. I don't know if it was because of the father or what, you know, but... Uh, I guess he looked at me more like a mother figure, you know, because he's always sent me, even till this day, he sends me a bouquet of Mother's Day flowers. My parents got divorced, and I kind of bounced back and forth between them. It was kind of a struggle for me for a while, but it's nothing out of the ordinary that any other kid goes through. I hung out with the stoners, and I also hung out with my jock friends because I like to, I like to play sports, but I like to drink beer and smoke a couple of joints on the weekend too. I went to school, but I didn't like school too much. The authoritarian kind of structure of we're telling you to go here and do this, and I rebelled against that. Dropped out of school, started getting in trouble after that. The story goes like this. Shaw and two of her friends allegedly lure the Canadian man out here to the desert or north of the city. Shaw then allegedly gets out of her car, goes to the bathroom, and on the way back, falls down. They had me pretend that my leg was hurt, and I guess this was a plan that they had um, conjured up. The Canadian man got out of the car to help Shaw. The man grabbed my arm to help me. Um, that's when the first gunshot went off. For a reason that I can't really understand, uh, I decided to bring a gun and, and shoot the man and kill him. I didn't go to sleep that night. Away? Yes, of course. <laughs> but why didn't you? 
I, I don't know. I didn't have anywhere to run to. You know, I couldn't just keep on running and running. Police say this desert landscape near Rancho and Durango was the stage of a grisly show and tell this past week. Police say the three suspects spent a week going back and forth here in the desert showing off the body to their friends. Then one of the small children who had seen the battered corpse got to feeling guilty and told police. Las Vegas uh, Metropolitan Police Department called me at work at midnight uh, and told me that they had Sandy downtown on a homicide. And I thought, oh my God, she hasn't gone through this again. When I was 13 years old, I was spending the night at a friend's house and her stepfather went into a jealous rage and shot and killed her mother and her mother's two friends and then killed himself. It changed my life. I detached myself from my emotions. Um, I didn't have a sense of life or death. It was just all the same to me. Another episode happened to her. She's walking home from school. Uh, sees this guy come running up behind her, girl in front of her. Sees the guy shoot the girl in the back of the head. 